So, the drums. Uh, with the cop show idea in mind, um, I wanted the drums to sound like they would uh, sort of in the 70s, early 80s, which was quite a dead sound. Um, and the reason it was a dead sound is because they used to close mic everything. And if you close mic a resonant drum, then it's, uh, it's an absolute nightmare. So what they started doing is they started muffling the drums using heavier, thicker heads. Um, so that, that's basically what I've done. Um, I, yeah, I wanted to use four toms, uh, just because I wanted to really. Um, and I've put uh, Evans hydraulic heads on the tops of all the toms. And the underneath um, has got Evans G2 coated. So the, the, it's quite heavy heads all the way around really. Uh, I still had to dampen a little bit, it was like I think most of the toms, apart from the, the small 8 inch tom, that hasn't got any other dampening on it. Um, this has got some tissue paper and masking tape I think. Oh no, I'm taking that off. It's got some on the top anyway. Um, this one has got some, definitely got some tissue paper and masking tape on the bottom. Also put this little cloth on because it was just ringing a little bit um, and it's not heavily taped on this, you know, it flaps around a little bit but it's fine when you hit the drum, it just uh, stops it from ringing that much. And the floor tom has got some tissue paper masking tape underneath. Um, the snare drum uh, has got a coated ambassador on it with an o-ring uh, to stop that from ringing. Um, the bass drum uh, I've taken the front head off because again that's something that they used to do in the, in the 70s um, to get that bass drum sound. It's a very immediate bass drum sound. Um, it doesn't really sound like a bass drum, it's just a, a big thump really. Uh, and I've put a, a duvet over the, over the front of that just to, to dampen the sound even more and to keep the sound of the other drums out of the bass drum mic. Uh, the bass drum mic I'm using is, even though you can't see it because of the front of the bass drum, um, is a, an STC 4033 that I got off eBay. Um, nice microphone, it's actually two microphones in one. It's a, a ribbon mic and also a dynamic, omnidirectional dynamic mic. And you can combine the two things to give you a, a cardioid pattern, um, which is what I've done, I think. I can't remember. But it sounds good anyway. Um, it's a, it's an unusual mic maybe to use on a bass drum. You might think because it's a ribbon mic, uh, you might damage it. Um, but it was quite a, it was used quite a lot in the early sixties, especially in places like Abbey Road, the Beatles. The first sort of year or two of Beatles recordings were used. Uh, they used the forty three three on the bass drum. Uh, and if you angle it right, then you can. You can avoid the, the direct blast of air that you get from the bass drum. Uh, snare drum, SM57. These three toms, SM58, uh, and there's a AKG D112 on the floor tom. Uh, the reason I've done that is because I don't have four SM58s. That's the only reason. Uh, it's just the mics I've got. Um, the overheads, are not really overheads, they're sort of cymbal mics really, they're not picking up the whole kit. Uh, this one is directed over the right cymbal and this one is directed over the hi-hat. Uh, I didn't really want to point them at the crash cymbals. You don't need to point mics at crash cymbals really, you know, it's they're loud enough already. It's fine. So, um, if I just play the toms you'll hear how dead this microphone probably won't pick it up very well. Um, So you can hear a fairly dead sounding. Bass drum is very dead. Snare drum is nice and fat. I've tuned it quite low. It's about the same as that first tom. Um, I always think people tune snare drums too high. Uh, it's just a personal preference. I don't think it adds any tone at all. If you just crack it up, you may as well use any old snare drum. You know, what's the point in paying a lot of money for a snare drum if you're just going to crank the whole thing up. So I think that's got quite a nice warm sound. Um, 
If you're interested, the drums, it's a, an old, not that old, uh, it's a Gretsch CE kit. Uh, I've had it for about 10 years maybe, a bit longer. Um, the snare drum is a custom built J&J custom drums snare drum, uh, maple templi, reinforcement rings. It can be quite loud if you hit it hard. I'm not going to be hitting the drums hard for this recording. It doesn't need it. It's not a rock sound. It's more of a sort of poppy, funky, you know, sort of think cadmium lacy, magnum, I don't know, whatever, professionals, that type of sound. That's sort of what I'm going for. The cymbals are old 1960s Zildjian A's. Um, but again, I got off eBay. Uh, I got quite a lot of things off eBay. It's a wonderful thing. So um, let's record some drums. Here we go. Right, so on to bass. Um, I'm basically going to record the bass DI'd and also through an amp uh, which is mic'd up. Uh, the microphone is a Peluso P12. The amp is a Fender Twin. Um, I'm on a bass amp and it sounds quite nice through there. So that's basically about it. Both the DI and uh, the mic are going through the Altec preamps, uh, same that we use for the drums. Uh, the split for the DI is this cheap little um, art preamp, uh, and it's great, you know, it's fine, it's got a couple of outputs, so uh, that's very handy. Um, so yeah, let's do some bass. So the next thing to do is um, the first guitar part. I've decided to do uh, two electric guitar parts. Uh, one is sort of following counter melody things and it also doubles with the bass, uh, which is the one I'm going to do first. Um, and then the other one is more of a rhythm with a wah wah pedal. So, uh, but first of all, it's the guitar one. Uh, and I'll be playing through the Fender Twin, uh, same as the bass. Uh, this time the microphone is, it's another Peluso mic, but it's the uh, 2247LE. Uh, it's basically a U47 copy. Um, I don't know how good a copy it is, I've never used a real U47, but it's a nice microphone, I like it. Um, and it works well for guitar. Um, so, here we go, guitar one. So that's one guitar down. Uh, time for the second guitar, which is the Wah Wah. Um, I've changed the microphone, same amp, but I've changed the mic um, to a ribbon. It's a lovely old RCA 44 ribbon mic there um, from the 1950s, again from eBay. Um, ah, great, really, really good mic. The reason I've changed the mic is first of all, the, the Wah Wah sound can be a little bit harsh. <coughs> So, if you've got a condenser mic uh, in front of that, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take your eyes out. Um, so, get a, a nice ribbon mic, it sort of rounds it out a little bit, uh, which is really nice. Um, yeah, Wah Wah Pedal, Crybaby, 
different guitar as well, again, just to give a different sound so that the two guitars don't sort of merge into each other. It's nice to get some definition um, between if you've got two of the same instrument um, and you've got different parts, then it's good to have different instruments, different microphones, different amp maybe. Just vary things slightly. Okay, so um, here we go. Well, well, guitar. Right, so we're upstairs now uh, to record some Rhodes. Here it is, Rhodes Mark 1. Uh, it was buried in the other room uh, with a load of other stuff on top of it. Um, I was going to get the the Wurlitzer out, I've got a Wurlitzer electric piano as well, but uh, I'm really glad I got this out uh, because it, it sounds absolutely wonderful, um, really really nice. It's going through the Fender Twin once again um, and the mic that's on it this time is uh, a Bay, Bay Dynamic, it's a ribbon mic again, um, so you, we get a nice sort of warm sound from it, it's a warm sound anyway, um, but it just sort of, because it's not going to be a prominent instrument, it's more of a padding instrument, background instrument, um, so that's why I wanted to just to, just to sit in the back would be, be quite nice, so the ribbon mic helps with that. Um, the, the, with regards to the piano part, um, I don't want to, I want to have a, a bit more rhythmic aspect coming in, the only rhythmic aspect we've got really at the moment is so the movement from the higher and the wah wah guitar. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of, of rhythm in to this, uh, to this piano part. Although I will stick a few held chords. I always think rhythm sections in bands that you know I either play with or I've seen, a lot of the rhythm sections just tend to overplay. Um, and not many people are happy just to sit and, and hold chords, you know, uh, just play bars of held chords instead of, you know, everybody wants to play loads of rhythm and uh, it all gets a little bit confusing. So um, yeah, some held chords, a bit of rhythmic idea coming in just to move it along a bit. Uh, I'm also going to move up slightly higher in the second part because the saxophones will come in uh, with a nice pad um, later on. Um, so just to anticipate that, I'll move slightly more up the keyboard to get out of the way of that. So. Um, yeah, let's record some roads. Right then, so second day of recording. Uh, and we're on to the brass. We'll start with the trumpets. Um, one thing I will say about when I'm recording brass parts, overlay and everything for, for big band stuff, um, it's a good idea, like I was saying with the, with the guitars and things like that, where you use different guitars, different mics, different amps, things like that. I do try to use uh, different instruments if I can. Um, I've got a couple of trumpets, um, two different mouthpieces, so there are four trumpet parts, so uh, I'll be alternating uh, mouthpieces and, and trumpets to get just to get a different sound. Uh, I'll be using the same microphone for all of the trumpet parts, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to imagine uh, that if I was playing in a section, uh, actually being recorded as a section, um, the way possible way of micing it up um, in in the 70s, 80s, I don't know, but possible way might be one microphone between two instruments, uh, in which case I'm going to alternate what side of the microphone uh, I'll be playing on, just to give the, you're just playing in a slightly different part of the room, um, otherwise you end up building up, um, sort of, you get, a, things get a bit out of phase, it gets a bit phasey, um, especially with trumpets because they're high frequency instruments. Um, it starts sounding a little bit, it can sound a bit horrible, especially if you're playing right on the mic as well, I'm not going to be doing that, but if you're playing brass, overdubbing brass right on a microphone in the same point of the room, same microphone, 
um, it's you're going to really start getting problems with phase issues and stuff. So, uh, just to recap, different instruments, different mouthpiece, different position on the mic. Um, I will be moving, so I'll do two parts on this position, one here, one here. Then I'll probably move the mic uh, slightly different part of the room and do the same, one instrument here, one instrument here. So um, let's start with second trumpet. And the reason I'm starting with second trumpet is when I'm playing lead trumpet, I like to be able to sit on top of the section. Um, just because it's if you start with lead trumpet and you're playing high, it's very easy to overblow. Um, and you get the, the balance will be all wrong. So if I start with second trumpet, it's fairly high anyway. So I'll go second, third, fourth, and then I'll play um, the, the lead part last. So here we go, second trumpet part, and this starts, the trumpets don't start until the, the second section. So um, that's where I'll be recording from. So now on to one of the instruments I find the trickiest, which is the trombone. Um, I'm not really a trombone player, uh, it's a bit alien to me with the, the slide, I'm a, really a trumpet player, um, so the sli slide confuses me a bit, but uh, if I practice enough then I can sort of get a decent enough sound um, and hopefully get the right notes in as well. So uh, trombone. Now we're on to French horns. Okay, so we're on to the final stretch. Uh, saxophones, two altos, two tenors, and a baritone that isn't really a baritone, but we'll come to that later. Um, again, I've not got alternate instruments uh, for these, so, but I do have uh, different mouthpieces, so I'll be using a uh, different mouthpiece for each uh, alto and a different mouthpiece for each tenor. It's the um, baritone saxophone. Honestly, it is. Um, I haven't got a real baritone. I could have borrowed one, uh, but I couldn't be bothered. It's just quicker, easier to use the alto uh, and pitch it down an octave. Uh, you don't get the best sound ever. It sort of sounds a little bit like it's underwater. Uh, we need to do a bit of EQing. But once it's blended in with 20 other instruments, uh, you really don't notice it at all. Uh, that's also the reason why I'm wearing headphones to record this particular one. Every other brass instrument, uh, in fact every other instrument apart from the drums, I've just had it coming through the speakers um, as, a, as a monitor. I don't mind that, I don't mind a bit of leakage, spillage, whatever you want to call it. It sort of adds to the depth of recording. Um, but the problem is when you put the pitch shift on uh, the alto, it will pitch shift <coughs> all the back in down again so it's it's really not a good thing to do so uh, that's why I've got the headphones so let's do it <laughs> So 
So, that's it. Uh, recording finished. I uh, hope you've enjoyed watching the process, uh, right from the writing of it, arranging, orchestrating, recording all the instruments. Um, and yeah, any questions, just post them underneath. And uh, if you stick around for the next 30 seconds, uh, you'll see and hear the full piece in action. So uh, thanks again for watching and cheers. I'll see you again.